my aunt used to run a summer program uh, in South Minneapolis in Sabathin, way back. Um, Sabathin, Sabathin yeah. Community Center. Yeah, uh, it used to be. It used to be called Smart Start. Um, mm -hmm. She used to. Uh, it was. She would do whatever ages. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the youth program called Horizons. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. So any pro, um, back then, Horizons was not gonna do elementary on down. So she would do elementary on down. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you mean like pre-K, like that? Yeah, way? yeah, yeah. So like it would, it would be, it would be from Horizons like sixth grade on up. So it was like fifth grade on down. It's okay. like kindergarten. So um, we were going field trips. I remember going up, going with her in the morning to go grab like four in the morning or like six in the morning to go grab like the free lunches from Cisco and whatnot. Yep. And just like, I think that program went, went to that program for years. We have to go. Like, it's your aunt, yeah. you're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is just that um, as a Liberian child, so, you know, we're going to South Minneapolis, we meet a lot of different kids, a lot of people from a lot of different um, backgrounds. And the biggest thing I remember is um, uh, our, our house was very competitive and I wasn't, the biggest in the sport at that time, cause I ain't grown my body yet. So I was like, you know, really chill, he's played chess and stuff like that. And I remember, and I remember that, I'm not too good anymore, I remember that we came across, remember I came across this, um, this, this kid, I forgot his name, I think his name was Jordan, from Harvest Prep. And man, those Harvest Prep kids are, man, they are up on it. And I remember I came across, I remember we, um, we were, it was a knowledge bowl. And I was like spanking everybody. You know, and I was like, you know, I was like, and the kid from Heart Trip just came, and I, I remember I was looking like, I raised my hand, you beat, what's this kid doing? And, and, and um, the kind of confidence he had um, was a confidence I haven't seen in educational settings. Even mm -hmm. the confidence that, that I have, you know what I'm saying, in my family, it came from my grandfather, because yeah. he, taught, he taught at Normandale, but, you know, usually you go to schools and they see your name as a foreign name when they're going to throw you in ESL. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's just the situation. So and I mean, if you didn't know who you were, you might just go. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But I mean, the the kind of confidence he had is is, is something that I always thought about. And I always talked to Mercer about. Is it. like you know, I always remember that instance because all the kids that came from Harvard were just that same way. Where there, there's a, there's a pride, there's a sense of identity, and they're very very um, aware of it, and they're very very confident. And I was like, wow, that's really 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 cool. Yeah. yeah. And I, I taught there. Oh, yes. there we go. Um, and I realized, I'm sorry, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I was, a Harvest Prep kid. Hey, mm -hmm. wow. Wow. So. Wow. all the connections in there. Yeah. So I was going to um, add to all of it. What we're talking about is narrative. Creating and securing your narrative because there's various things out here that are going to pull at that. We're the sum of all our experiences. We can't escape that. How we learn is through hear, smell, taste, and what we go through, mm -hmm. essentially. So to push and to even let people know that you have a narrative and that who you are, and that was one of the biggest things I know that separates, because at Harvest Prep, we had to adhere to the same state standards. We had yes. um, similar curriculum, but the biggest thing we did was knowledge of self and mm -hmm. confidence, love, knowledge and love of self. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you know who you are, love mm -hmm. who you are, then you can show up in any medium mm -hmm. and be successful. Mm -hmm. and that was one of the biggest things that we did there. Um, mm -hmm. Starting the day, singing the Black National Anthem, mm -hmm. and had, a, had an African mm -hmm. pledge, mm -hmm. you know, all those things that were just instilling. So even if, you know, you're like, oh, do this, but yet, see, yet and still those seeds were being planted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and one day, you know, because we mature, we evolve, and they, I know they click at some point, they, it will. So. One thing I noticed about your introduction is you stood and declared, and that is, uh, that's actually a cultural piece out of uh, the Freedom School's curriculum. Mm -hmm. That's the plan teaching us, yeah. saying you are somebody. You know, you stand yes. and declare and say your name. Um, but that is really what we want our education to bring that. You know, that's what I got at Howard. That is what I got from my educators mm -hmm. at, um, at, at even Harvest, or I went to North graduated out of North, but I had deans and people who would come. North has the worst graduation rates in Minnesota. We were 36% when I graduated. Mm -hmm. And I still remember the educators who would come into that building wear suits every day, mm -hmm. right? And that felt odd and it felt extra, but we are extra because we're urgent about really anchoring that identity and positivity mm -hmm. and in pride and in you are the you are able to navigate all of the challenges that we know may be a part of your story mm -hmm. and, and be great despite them. Um, Thank you all for adding to this, uh, to our program value and to this discussion. Oh.
say that. No, I agree is that is that what you're saying is even if it doesn't make sense then it clicks later on and, and whatever you do um, over and over again it is, is what's going to be it is something that's going to be part of your routine and part of yourself mm -hmm. and whether you don't want to sing at that time but you do like perfect example like even with the summer program i hated uh what was it what was it it was the, we did this it was the phonetics um, i think it was it was like, it was like B, and then you would like pronounce the, the phoenix behind it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I didn't know it made sense at that time, I just knew it was annoying. But as you do it more and more and more, <laughs> and everything you do is like, even with your parents, like, like for example, like I didn't, when I wake up in the morning when I hate pressing, I hate depressing clothes. But now I press everything with a crease in the middle of it because my dad, <laughs> press everything. If you don't press with a crease in the middle, then it's not pressed. So I mean, you just, I mean, it may be conditioning, it may be whatever it is, but you know, these are the things that, that set you yeah. up for success later on. But you don't realize why you even need them. It's just annoying. But they're gonna think that. But as long as we're doing it and we kind of guide them, then they'll be set up for success to reap those benefits later on when it clicks. So yeah. that makes sense. And can I just add just one little thing here? You know, my brother, like what you just said, like about the crease. One of my brothers, he's an RN. He worked at Freda Hospital in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And now about that crease, you know, really when we were younger, growing up, if he could not iron his pants for school, seriously, he would not go to school. And then, you know, one day he um, he cut off the, the cord because I had a shortage. Then he put the iron on the stove. And that's when we first like, wow, we can still iron our clothes because, you know, the stove heat up the iron, we can iron our clothes. And right today, he got voted for the best dress at the hospital because he always had wow. creases in his clothes. And he's the, the neatest nurse you could ever see, like the crease. And, you know, and then you always see him adjusting his clothes. Is a nurse too? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, wow. so again, speaking about yeah. that, it comes from the home. Because my dad would say, before you leave this house, if your appearance is not a part, because how people see you out there, you know, do you think they would want to socialize with you and talk to you? So mm -hmm. think about how you look before you get out there to society. Your appearance is always a plus. And I mean, and here we are. I mean, so that matters. So thank you for yeah. reminding me about that. That's awesome. And I would even build on and say it may come from the home, but it definitely needs to come from the village. Mm -hmm. And so you all are the village. And within all of these, whether it's creasing your clothes or standing in the clan or w with all of these, the whisper behind that is you are somebody and mm -hmm. I care about how you navigate this world. And I know a little something about it. And so I'm here to be a part of the journey to making sure that you're successful. And so that's what you all are doing by joining the Amosha village. And we want you to capture those whispers. If it's going to build um, our kids up, then please use this weekend as the opportunity because we only get three weekends a year with our families. Um, and one, and for our educational team, we only get one day of that weekend with these kids. Um, so plant the seeds. Plant them. Yeah. We're, and, and we're think, with you, you know, be extra. Be, this is our time. I think like next time when we have this event, you know what will be really a plus? Yeah. And I talk about it. Like you know, all right these. Now great voices in a room and they're like, you know, how they speak and how, you know, they come in different terms. If it's like a more using bigger words or whatever, I think we all should come with just a small poem that we feel that will contribute, you know, not nothing huge, but just a, something small. So when you say introduce yourself with your poem that I email, you know, you hit that ready and then you say a poem that you think that adds to you know, you're like the student asking for homework. Everyone looking at you. Next time, next time. Really, because I'm so appalled by it, what these guys are saying. Before I leave, I'm going to take a picture of that because yeah. I want to put that inside one of my notes, well, and, and I want to pass it on. I appreciate you because this why I'm older piece is actually something we want to build out. Mm -hmm. We did have um, our, we had two youth counselors. We had one do a video. And this video is on why emotion is important. He's an adult transracial adoptee. But we want to build this out, of course. So yeah. this is the seeds. But we want to uh, engage with you. And we want you to tell your stories and share your gifts and say why I'm here, why it's important, and also some of the greatness that you bring to it. When we have, the people we have in the room, I'm like, the emotion team is tied. And the world doesn't know, right? You just come with the kids, and then you're in the rooms, and then you leave. And their parents don't know that you're motivational. They don't know that you're working in community organizations and leading and facilitating groups. They don't know about your 20 years worth of experience or your insights or your intellect. And so we want to give them that window. And so hearing you say that you, you're on board, oh yeah, hey, okay, thanks. <laughs> We're just getting started. Um, 